Hello there, this is David from David Books and Comics, and uh, today I want to show some of the East Paperbacks, Fistroy East Paperbacks, that was published by um, Ace uh, back in the 1960s, 50s, and late 50s and 60s. And I'll show you where they originally came from. Initially, Ace was I think planning to publish the entire uh, hardcover uh, book series uh, edited by I.O. Evans of uh, uh, Jules Verne and these are some of the books that they published uh, the list there and this is uh, Burbank the Northerner this isn't really science fiction this is more like a historical novel uh, that takes place um, during the time of the Civil War. Anyway, so I'll present you the um, uh, the uh, Ace books. Now, those of you who know Jules Verne, Jules Verne uh, was born in 1828, died in 1905. He was a prolific writer. Um, he uh, wrote a, a series of novels uh, by a French publisher um, who I don't remember the name, but it was the Extraordinaire Voyage, the Extraordinary Voyages. And um, they included, um, uh, among other things, among other novels, uh, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, uh, off on a Comet, um, and the uh, Robert the Conqueror and, Ma and Master of the World. Now, Verne's uh, writings uh, were made into very famous films, the first one being 1954's uh, Walt Disney version of 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, starring uh, James Mason and Kirk Douglas. And then in uh, 1958, James Mason again played uh, a Verne character, and that was um, uh, Arnie Sacknesson for, for a Journey to the Center of the Earth. And then uh, Mysterious Island uh, was released. Captain Nemo, in that case, I believe, was played by Herbert Lom, famous uh, hammer horror uh, actor, famous British actor. And then in uh, 19... It was Mysterious Island. Oh yeah, Master of the World. And that one was with uh, Vincent Price in uh, playing the, the, the rover, the conqueror character. And the other uh, main character was uh, Charles Bronson, who played the lead uh, protagonist, John Stock. So I'll present to you the, uh, the, ace, uh, the ace paperbacks. Uh, I thought you might like to see those. Managed to uh, make a complete collection uh, of that. So the first one I'll present is this one. It's called uh, Begum's uh, Fortune. That's, that's the first one. And the, yeah, the in, uh, cover, uh, cover art is written, is uh, done by this fellow, Podwill, Jerome Podwill. And this is the first in that series. It's called Beckham's Fortune. The next one is this very clean mint copy of the Carpathian uh, Castle. There's that one. And this is the first that we collected. This is City in the Sahara. And we can look inside. And there's uh, Translate from the French by I.O. Evans, one of the better translations. This is book two of the Barsac mission. 
Uh, there you go, Jerome Podwell did the cover art. The sketch is Ron Miller, and that's the sketch here. And the next one in the series is The Demon of Kanpur. Sorry for the glare. It's the Demon of Kanpur. And this is the village in the treetops. Both this one, Demon of Kanpur, and Village in the Treetops have uh, science fiction elements. So in deepest Africa, mysterious lights, an attack by enraged elephants, a lost race of eight men, and an unknown kingdom ruled by a mystic monarch. It's like a Prester John type adventure story. Can this action-packed jungle adventure be a novel by the famed... Jules Verne, who foresaw the submarine and the airplane, or is it more likely to be the work of Haggard or even Orneg Rice Burroughs? But Village in the Treetops is indeed Verne. Okay, so there you go. Village in the Treetops. The next one in the series is this one, and it's For the Flag. And this is The Hunt for the Meteor. This is one of the uh, Fitzroy editions are uh, one of the better of the English translations of uh, Jules Verne. There was a tendency among translators, uh, English translators of Verne's works, which were originally written in French, to uh, skimp and uh, edit away the scientific elements of his stories, um, undermining the quality of his work, obviously. So there's The Hunt for the Meteor. And here's another uh, very fine copy of Into the Niger Bend. And the next one in the series is uh, Tigers and Traders. Okay. And the last one that I want to show is a very famous one. This is one of his last novels that some speculate was likely written after he had died. And this one is called Yesterday and Tomorrow. And uh, Yesterday and uh, Tomorrow is a kind of uh, a post-apocalyptic uh, novel written at the uh, dawn of... Uh, not at, not at the dawn, but at the end of human existence. And uh, it features uh, some very um, pessimistic kind of views of where science and where humankind is, is, is going. Similar to, in some respects, it uh, has some similarities with H.G. Uh, Wells' kind of view of humankind in uh, the time machine. So this is the, the last novel that he wrote, Yesterday and Tomorrow, and this is the, um, there were ten uh, paperbacks in all of the, uh, the Ace books uh, published of uh, Jules Verne's writings. Some of them have the elements that you would find in his more famous works, like uh, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, Around the World in 80 Days, and um, um, Mysterious Island, and, and Master of the World. 
but um, by and large, it's really the uh, the covers and the uh, translations of his works that are that make in this uh, Ace book series well worth uh, collecting. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this little short foray into uh, the works of uh, Jules Verne. And if you did, remember uh, to give me a like. Thanks everyone who has subscribed. And uh, feel free to comment and offer your own ideas. Uh, Jules Verne is probably one of the most influential uh, writers uh, that... Uh, contributed to what later became known as science fiction. And uh, he and, and H.G. Wells are the ones who really uh, hold that torch, but neither of them uh, would consider themselves uh, science fiction writers. They uh, were really uh, products of their own era and um, formed by the, the societies and the influences that they grew up with. Verne's major influences were really uh, uh, the writers that he uh, came across, the more popular writers who were serialized in many of the French newspapers of his time. Victor Hugo, uh, who wrote uh, The Hunchback of Notre Dame, and um, Les Miserables, and uh, L'homme qui rit, the man who laughs, and so on. And uh, the other fellow being uh, Alexandre Dumas, fils, the, the son, who uh, wrote The Three Musketeers and uh, The Count of Monte Cristo. So he was really one of, one of that. His novels were not known for uh, development of characterization and so on. They were more about the plot and the story, and the adventure, and the, the mystery of discovery, and so on, with elements of, uh, of uh, both uh, that combination of horror and, uh, and uh, slight element of horror and mystery. So there you go, that's Jules Verne, the, uh, one of the progenitors of what we could call modern science fiction. Okay, thanks for watching. And uh, feel free to uh, comment. Thanks everyone for subscribing. And, um, and if you like what you saw, remember to uh, give me that like. Okay, thanks. Bye.